Good evening. We begin tonight with the deadly epidemic of gun violence in America, a problem with no let up in sight. In California, authorities are trying to determine the motive behind this weekend's shooting in Monterey Park. The community is grieving over the attack that left at least 11 people dead. Today in Des Moines, Iowa, two students were killed and a teacher was injured during a shooting at a charter school. Multiple suspects were taken into custody. And in Baton Rouge, a shooting at a nightclub injured a dozen people. Amna Navaz is in Monterey Park. Amna? Jeff, once again, the headline we're reporting is another mass shooting in America. According to the Gun Violence Archive, the 33rd such mass shooting in this calendar year alone, and the deadliest mass shooting the country has seen since 19 children and two teachers were killed last year in Uvalde, Texas. Monterey Park, California, this quiet, tight-knit community outside of Los Angeles is now bound into this sisterhood of cities and communities forever changed by this uniquely American problem of mass gun violence. A city that two days ago was bustling with Lunar New Year celebrations, now mostly quiet. In downtown Monterey Park, makeshift memorials to the victims of Saturday night's dance hall rampage. 60-year-old Jack Yang came to pay his respects this morning. He's lived here for three decades and often went to the Star Dance Studio. He said his friend was killed there Saturday night. I'm very sad. Yeah, my good friend, a very nice man. When he arrived at City Hall this morning, Monterey Park Mayor Henry Lowe was still processing the devastation. The population in this city of about 60,000 is 65 percent Asian, mostly Chinese immigrants and first generation Asian Americans. Lowe said the timing of the shooting with decorative lanterns and celebratory signs still hanging makes it that much more painful. The Lunar New Year, you know, it's a time of renewal, of optimism for the future. And so it was, uh, you know, in a sense, a celebration, a triumph that we had made it through the ravages of the pandemic. Um, and, you know, we had our carnival uh, um, near the incident of the shooting. And so it's just a cast of Paul. Um, and it's, it's um, been revered. I think a lot of people are still in dis disbelief that this happened. Officials today revealed that all but one of the victims were in their 60s and 70s. These are people who either came here or yeah. spent most of their lives working towards yes. some higher vision yeah. of what this country could be. For them to lose their lives in this way, how does that sit with you? It doesn't sit well with me. Um, in fact, I was just thinking, I was reflecting last night, um, and I was just thinking, <sighs> excuse me. I'm so sorry. That to, to her people, <laughs> the victims, their families, the survivors, their lives are shattered, and they won't be able to enjoy things that I enjoy. It's so simple, so just um, expected, you know, during the um, holidays. <laughs> and, you know, I, and I feel for them. Late Sunday, authorities identified the gunman as 72-year-old Hugh Con Tran. He was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in a white van that authorities cornered about 30 miles from the dance hall. He fled Monterey Park after people at a second dance hall in the nearby city of Alhambra wrestled away his gun. Police said the weapon was a semi-automatic pistol with an extended magazine, and they found a second handgun in his van. Elizabeth Yang's law firm sits across the street from the Star Dance Studio. The 40-year-old dances there every Monday. She was welcomed, she says, by the older generation of dancers who frequented that space. After the shooting, her phone was flooded with messages and images from other studio goers. Star Ballroom has been here for a long time. It's a big part of our community. It brings people together, brings elderly people together, and it gives them a way to stay fit and healthy. So I would hate to see that business go under, and I, I'm, I'm going to continue supporting it myself. And I don't want this one-off incident to make people feel like Monterey Park is not a safe city because it's, it's a very safe city, and I, I love living in the city. Today, the identities of victims began trickling out. The Los Angeles County Coroner's Office released the names of two women killed, 65-year-old Mi Nyang and 63-year-old Lilan Li. Lee. Back at the scene of the shooting, residents are now grappling with how to move forward. 
27-year-old Jonathan Luke lives less than a block from here. He moved to Monterey Park about three years ago because he loved the food scene. It's the kind of place where you walk home and you smell people cooking their dinner, you know, right at six o'clock, they're cooking dinner for their family. What does something like this like do to a community? You know, it's very quiet. Um, that's a big reason why I love this neighborhood. And I was scared that everything was gonna change. And it, it might, I don't know yet, right? This place that residents call overwhelmingly safe, calm, and tight-knit, now the latest pin on America's horrific map of mass shootings. And we're learning new details today about that gunman, including his connection to this star dance studio behind me. He did used to come here, and according to a statement from his ex-wife, they, in fact, met here years ago. Uh, we're also learning new details from local officials who are now reportedly saying that the gunman had recently come to law enforcement authorities in the nearby town of Hemet and claimed that his own family members were trying to target and poison him. Jeff, this obviously raises a number of additional questions authorities will be looking to answer in the days and weeks ahead. Amna, um, what more have you learned about Monterey Park and the people who call it home? You know, Jeff, I think you and I know, having covered a number of these, there are things that tie communities together when they're touched by this kind of gun violence, the disbelief, the grief, the long tail of trauma. But these communities are specific and unique in their own ways. Here in Monterey Park, it's a point of pride for people. They do boast that this is the first majority Asian American city in the entire continental United States. And they also point out that the same generation that helped to build this community over the last 40 and 50 years and make it what it is today were among those who lost their lives in Saturday's killing. They also do make clear, though, that they think that same sense of resilience and perseverance and hope that made this community what it is today is what will get people through in the days and weeks and months ahead. Few people understand that sense of community better than my next guest. Joining me here in Monterey Park, California, is the U.S. Representative from California's 28th Congressional District, Judy Chu. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is your hometown. Yes. You were mayor here. Mm -hmm. What did you think when you heard the news? I was horrified. I was stunned. You know, this is a peaceful, quiet town. It's a suburb. It's a great place to raise kids. And to think that there could be this horrific violence happening right in the middle of it where 11 lives now have been taken away from us and the remainder are still in the hospital, some with very, very serious conditions. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that I could not have imagined. But what was, what was even more terrifying yesterday was the fact that the shooter was loose. He was out in the community and so many members of the community were so uh, afraid they were terrified that if they go to an event, he could come and shoot at them, too. Mm -hmm. We tried to reassure them, but that you could still see the fear in their eyes. So when 5 o'clock came and the press conference came where he was declared captured and that he killed himself, mm -hmm. um, there was relief in We've the community. Seen those reports today, obviously, about his connection to the studio, yeah. about local officials expressing concern. What else have you learned about the gunman? Well, he certainly was uh, an avid ballroom dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, he seemed to think his skills were pretty high. Uh, he met his wife here, and uh, she says that he criticized her for her uh, uh, misses in the dance moves. Mm. And then he divorced her in 2005. Uh, so she said he was quick to anger, and um, uh, I suspect that has something to do with what happened here. I do not know what ultimately made him snap like that, mm -hmm. but clearly he had a connection with these two studios. What about the weapon? I mean, we've read that it's a semi-automatic pistol, officials have confirmed, with an extended magazine. Yeah. That particular firearm is illegal here yeah. in California. How did he get it? Who knows? Actually, that is on top of my list of questions about what happened. I want to know how he obtained these guns, because that's only the second gun. The first gun, still, the identity of it hasn't been released. Uh, but I want to know how he got that one. And I want to know whether he went through the background checks or w whether he evaded it, like so many other Americans who try to evade it by not going through a typical store, but instead doing an online purchase mm -hmm. or a gun store purchase or a private purchase. Those are all questions you still don't have answers to. No, we don't.
You spoke with President Biden today. I did. You tweeted earlier. Did he make any pledges to you about additional executive action he can take when it comes to gun safety? Well, uh, he was focused, first of all, on the victims and making sure that they got the help that they needed. Uh, he pledged all the support that they needed. He also pledged support from the federal agencies. And actually, I do have to give them much praise because right from the beginning, the FBI was there, uh, ATF, uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office. They were there backing up the L.A. County Sheriff's and uh, the Monterey Park Police Department. Mm -hmm. So we have had the full level of law enforcement, and that's why this man was captured mm -hmm. even before 24 hours were done. Mm -hmm. We should know President Biden has long urged Congress to take additional action when it comes to gun safety and, and legislation around that. It was last year that it took nearly 30 years, multiple mass shootings for there to be limited bipartisan gun safety reform that made it through a Democratic-led Congress. Yes. Is there any hope for additional reform in this divided Congress? We have to fight for it. We have to take a step forward wherever we can. It was a limited bill, but I did take pride in the fact that it actually passed after 30 years of nothing. Uh, I still think that we should put at the top of the list true universal background checks. Uh, because those have proven to save lives by keeping guns out of the hands of violent and criminal people. Um, and uh, uh, the reason I say true is because so many people use those loopholes uh, by buying online or through a private purchase. So we have to close that gap. Is there hope for that in a Republican-led House? Well, we have to see what we can do. Uh, Americans have to raise their voices and show how important this is to them, and especially those living in the districts of those uh, members of Congress who are resistant to this. Because those Congress members could be the next ones with a mass shooting in their district. Their constituents could be the victims, their neighbors, their family members, their loved ones. So until we stop this proliferation of gun violence, none of us will be safe. What do you want people to understand about this particular community that you know so well, what they've been through and what they'll go through ahead? This is a community that um, is very tight-knit. It's a community that uh, is a great place to raise kids. There's a high quality of life. Um, there is a park within every mile of a home. And um, of course, we have the greatest Chinese food in the world, I believe. Uh, <laughs> We've heard that yeah. from several people. Uh, we value diversity. We have a 65% Asian population. That's why our Lunar New Year celebration was so big. Mm -hmm. We had 100,000 people there. And we were doing the opening ceremony just one block away from where the shooting was taking place. And you were there, right? Just hours I, before it happened. That's the thing. Yeah. Yes, it was only um, hours away from when the shooting took place. And so um, it, it certainly was a, a horrific way to start the Lunar New Year which is the most important holiday for Asians across this world. Mm -hmm. People were really looking forward to this one because this celebration had been on hiatus for three years due to COVID. So there was so much energy around being there in person with one another and hopefully going towards normalcy. Yes, we hope that does come ahead. We've heard a lot about the resilience of this community. Congresswoman Judy Chu, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Jeff, as you've heard here, of course, stories of pain and grief, as we know, with a long tail of trauma ahead in these communities, but also resilience and hope that things can, at some point, get back to normal. Jeff? Yeah. Amna Nawaz in Monterey Park, California tonight. Amna, thank you.